Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. Flyers in the foyer. You want to make sure you take some flyers and pass them out at school or at work tomorrow and invite somebody to the house of God. I believe if you bring enough empty vessels, God will fill every empty vessel. You bring them to the house. God is about the business of filling empty vessels. Praise God. Brother Wells, won't you just come? Whatever God's told you, you tell us tonight. Somebody point at him and say, preach to me, preacher. Praise God. Pray for his house and praise for his family as he comes tonight. We love you, Brother Wells. Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Why don't we stand and lift our hands to heaven and say, God, whatever you're doing in this place tonight, I want to be right in the middle of it. I want to be in the middle of everything you're doing, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, Mosiah, come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. God, I want you to do something in my heart tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What a great presence of the Lord is here tonight, a deep move of God's presence. In his presence, there is absolutely limitless potential. Whatever you need tonight, God's got it. Amen. I learned a long time ago that God doesn't go the way we go. We have healing services. God just has services. He can heal somebody over here, fill somebody with the Holy Ghost over here, set somebody free from alcohol over here. He doesn't, doesn't bother him. Hey Amen. His power is unbelievably. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 7, very familiar passage of Scripture. No doubt uh, every preacher that's begun a ministry has preached from this text. And the uh, Holy Ghost will visit us tonight. I believe God wants to speak to our hearts, and speak to our minds. And it is good to be with you today. I give honor to Pastor and Sister Sutton and their family, the leadership of this church. And uh, what a great job they have done. And uh, what a, a, a lighthouse, a beacon of revival and apostolic worship and praise in our movement. And uh, I am glad to be here. It's my honor to be here. And uh, I just enjoy coming, being with you. And uh, I believe God wants to do something for us. How about you? Amen. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? He said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. There were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. They said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. They rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were coming to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight, left their tents, their horses, their asses, and even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And the lepers came to the part, uttermost part of the camp. They went into one tent, did eat and drink, carried thence silver and gold and raiment, Went and hid it and came again, entered to another tent, carried thence also, and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This is a day of glad tidings. We hold our peace. We tarry till morning light. Some mischief will come upon us. 
Now therefore come that we may go into the king's, go and tell the king's house so. So they come back. They told the king, we found a Syrian camp abandoned. And there's enough food to feed the whole city. The Bible says that they only had two horses left to be able to even go get it. But when they brought it back, the Bible said, and this is where I want to preach from, verse 16, the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour, flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel according to the word of the Lord. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate and he died. As the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying two measures of barley for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And that Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be. He said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And here's where I want to preach. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. And so it fell out unto him. Amen. I want to preach the help of the Holy Ghost. How will it fall on you? Amen. How will it fall on you? Let's ask the Holy Ghost to help us. Father, we trust you. God, I believe that you've spoken to my spirit. I pray that in the next few minutes you would speak through me, anoint my mind, anoint my spirit, that I could follow you and you would lead me, I pray, in Jesus' name. Connect us tonight. Give us faith. Give us revival in our day. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you clap your hands to heaven with all of your might as you are seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> the Bible tells us that Ben hated the king of Syria. This is a familiar story, so just preach along with me and it'll get over if in just a minute. But uh, this is uh, the story of Samaria. And Ben hated the king of Syria, had surrounded it. And the word is used in the text that he besieged it and he cut it off that no one would come in and no one would come out. I don't know about you, uh, but that is about as cruel as you can be uh, if you were to do something to me. I, 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 I hate losing the freedom to come and go. And uh, the, my, the Bible tells us that Samaria uh, got shut off from the rest of the world. They got shut off from their supply. And uh, to the point that... Uh, they didn't even have to fight a battle. The king of Syria didn't. They just surrounded them and began to watch as Samaria grew more and more isolated. And uh, their food stores began to dwindle. And uh, their ability to uh, feed themselves be, became worse and worse. To the point that the Bible says uh, a fourth part of a calf of doves done, less than half a pint. Uh, of doves dung sold for five pieces of silver and the head of a donkey sold for 80 pieces of silver. It got to the point that uh, two women or one uh, woman came to the king and said, uh, this lady and I had a deal that, that uh, we were going to eat our children. Amen. That we were going to cook one today and eat it. And then tomorrow we would cook another and eat it. And now... Amen, that we've eaten my son. Uh, she has gone and hid her child. Amen, such a terrible place for the people of God to be. It was, uh, amen, the king's fault uh, that they were where they were. God had judged uh, uh, the son of Ahab, uh, and, and God's hand had brought uh, this 
army against them. But no matter, it was God's people that were in trouble. And, and the king, although he doesn't fear God, obviously, and he does not honor the prophet, uh, he starts blaming it on Elisha, the preacher. He stands up. The Bible said he had on sackcloth and uh, he rent his clothes and he said, behold, the Lord do also to me as if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is standing on his head, on his shoulders tomorrow. In other words, uh, he said, I'm going to kill Elisha for this. Amen. It wasn't Elisha's fault that you're in this place, king. It was your leadership and your guidance and your idol worship that brought about this uh, place of, of, of mess and this, this barren existence. But uh, he stands and he says, I'm going to kill Elisha. I, I, I hate him. Amen. He's the reason we're, where we're at. And the Bible says that while all this is going on, uh, that Elisha sat in his house and there were elders sitting with him. And I don't know what they were talking about. I don't know what they were discussing. But they're sitting there and, and the Bible says that Elisha suddenly raised his head and he told the elders that were with him, see this son of a murderer who's coming down to talk to me. Amen. He said when he comes in, grab him, hold him fast. Uh, is not the sound of his master's feet behind him. Elisha said, the king has sent me a messenger, but uh, uh, they're not coming to give us a message. They're coming to kill me. And so all this is going on. And, and this guy runs in and the king's close behind him. And Elisha Elisha stands up and all of a sudden uh, the word of God gets in his mouth. Uh, he doesn't understand this moment. Of, uh, uh, he thinks maybe uh, that, that this guy's coming to kill him and he was coming to kill him. But all of a sudden in this moment uh, of distress, in this moment of trouble, and then the word of God thunders out of Elisha's spirit. And he stands up and he looks at a God forsaken king and he looks at a a city that's been judged because of their leadership and something thunders out of his spirit and he says tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria and the word of God came out of his mouth he wasn't intending on blessing that king that day he wasn't intending on blessing that messenger that day but God was ready to visit his people with revival. God was ready to visit a city with a supernatural outpouring of provision. God was ready to do a work in their day that they couldn't believe though it were told them. And Elisha said it's going to happen. Set your clock. Set your watch. Tomorrow about this time there's going to be a measure of flour and a measure of barley. Two measures of barley sold for a shekel. And the Bible says then a man on whose hand the king leaned, a man of influence, a man of power, a man that had the ear of the king, he said to the prophet, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? Hey man, Brother Collins was in the Holy Ghost tonight. Uh, he couldn't get it in his mind uh, what God was seeing. Uh, all he could see was a handful of doves dung. All he could see was a donkey's head. All he could see was babies being eaten. Uh, and he couldn't see beyond his circumstance. Uh, even though the word came to him. Even though the word was clear and concise and sharp and exact. Uh, he couldn't see it. Uh, he said, if the Lord uh, would make windows... Uh, in heaven, this thing might happen. If the Lord were to open up the heavens, it might happen like you're saying it's happening. And Elisha wants to judge him. Elisha wants to punch him in the face almost. But the Bible said that something come out of his spirit. And he said, you're going to see it with your eyes. But you shall not eat thereof. And that word of God, that prophetic word, that unction, revival's on its way. Supernatural outpouring is on its way. Supernatural provision is coming tomorrow. The Bible said he answered, if the Lord. And the Bible goes into meanwhile mode. 
me. Kind of like those comic books, you know. Meanwhile, while this is happening, while the man of influence is saying it ain't never going to happen, while the man of influence is saying it, God, God would have to make windows in heaven that this thing would even possible, even maybe be possible. But the Bible said there were four leprous men. At the entering in of the gate, they didn't have enough fingers between them to count to ten. They were messed up. They were forsaken. They were starving to death. Leprosy had eaten them up. They were living in judgment. They were living in misery. They were living in the condition of their situation. And the Bible said they looked at each other. They didn't know. My God have mercy. They didn't hear the word of God. They weren't sitting in the preacher's house. They weren't sitting in the elder's house. But what they didn't know was there was a word of God that was looking for an avenue. There was a word of God that was looking for a vessel. There was a prophetic unction in the spirit that was looking for a place to manifest itself. Come on, you don't ever know when you might run into a prophecy. You don't ever know when you might run into a word of God that's just waiting on somebody to pour out on. You may think I'm just shouting. You may think I'm just doing something, but I'm trying to run into a prophecy. I'm trying to line up with a place for God to pour it out on us. Oh, come on, let's shout in this house tonight. Somebody clap your hands to heaven. And they said, we're lepers. We're dying. No cure for leprosy. We're in trouble. We're going to die slowly here, but we're going to die to be sure. And they said, if we enter the city, they're eating doves, dung, and donkey's heads. And I don't like eating kids. (laughs) If we go there, we're going to die. And if we sit here, we're going to (laughs) die. Let's do something stupid. (laughs) Let's do something that ain't never been done before. (laughs) Let's do something against traditional thinking. Let's do something against cultural thinking. Let's do something that's never been done in our city. Let's just go attack. Let's just go down there and see what happens. (laughs) There's only four of us, you idiot. That's the biggest army that's ever been assembled. Yeah, but you don't ever know what God might do. We might run into a prophecy on the way. We might run into a word that's looking for somebody. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth seeking somebody whose heart is right so he can show himself powerful on their behalf. Amen. Let's just try something. Let's don't just sit here and rot. Let's try something. It ain't going to work. Probably not. But if it does, they're going to write books about it. If it does, we're going to... If it does work, we're going to go from being lepers outside the gate to sitting in the king's house. It ain't going to work, but it might. It's not going to work because of what we did. It's not going to work because we're smarter than everybody else. It's not going to work. No, it's going to work because we got in line with a prophecy that was looking for an outpouring, that was looking for a place. I'm just looking for a vessel. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a revival in Birmingham. God's just looking for somebody. Are you the one? Are you the one? You're gonna, are you going to let me use you? Are you going to let me dump it out on you? Come on, God's looking for somebody that'll get up out of the place. I'd say, I'm going to try something. I can't sit here till I die. You're telling me it'll never work. You're telling me it can't happen. But I'm telling you, God is looking for somebody to empty out the heavens on. 
Hallelujah. I started to title this, God Don't Need Windows, Just Idiots. He don't need windows. The man on whose hand the king said God would have to have windows. There'd have to be windows in heaven for this thing to even happen. And God said, I don't need windows. I just need four lepers that'll get up out of their pew and say, I'm going to try something. I'm going somewhere. I'm headed for some. Hey man, you'll never do that. That's impossible. I know. But maybe God will work for it. And so they start on their journey to the camp of the Syrians. Their faith only goes so far. They're not blowing trumpets, letting everybody know they're coming. They're trying the sneak approach. I mean, I got faith, but <laughs> don't step on that stick. <laughs> I got faith, but let's be quiet. <laughs> They're going creeping down through there. Can you imagine? When I get to heaven, you know, you guys that have heard me preach before, you know that I got this little dream that when I get to heaven, I'm going to get to just kind of replay the Bible. After the first several million years of worshiping God, I'm going to get to sit in this little room with this big screen. I don't know if there's home theaters in heaven or not. But, and I'll just get to type in what I want. First, second Kings chapter 7, I want to see how that really happened. See if I've been preaching it right this whole time. But the Bible don't tell us how it happened, so you got to believe my story. I believe that's the foolishness of preaching. We get to heaven, God's going to like, Wells, you preached that wrong for 15 years. But you was ignorant. You didn't know no better. I, I see in my mind's eye. I read the Bible like Louis L'Amour's, you know. I see these four guys tiptoeing down to the camp. They're scared of death. I mean, one guard could kill all four of them as weak as they are. We're lepers, man. We got sores all over our face. We, we, I, we, we're not attractive. We, man, we're a mess. But we're doing something. <laughs> and they're creeping down through there. And one of them steps on a stick and the other three nearly just beat him to death. Be quiet! So they, the Bible says that when they came to the uttermost part of the camp, they didn't go in the daytime. They, their faith only had so many limits. You know, They went at night in the dark, quietly. But when they got there, the Bible said they kind of eased into the camp and there wasn't no guard saying, Halt! Who goes there? So they come to a tent. Nobody's in it. <laughs> but there's some tater chips in there and some little Debbie cakes. <laughs> Maybe there's a fruit basket. That's the reason I can't lose weight as an evangelist because there's always fruit basket. I've had three fruit baskets this week. <laughs> It would be great if there were fruit. This one's a healthy one. And here's y'all's place. But the last one had two bags of those unwrapped. One of them was unwrapped Snickers and one of them's unwrapped Twix. I was only there three days and they had two bags of them. The big bag. It's all I could do to eat all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a long time to eat a whole bag of Snickers. <laughs> These guys go in this tent and there's all kind of food there and gold and silver. Man, they're starting, they're eating fast as they can eat, stuffing it in, man, ripping open Debbie cake packs and man, putting them in their pockets and picking up money. And, and the Bible says, watch this, they went 
and hid it. Now, there's no way to prove this. Some scholars believe it's true. I don't know whether it is or not, but it sure preaches good. You remember Elisha's servant, Gehazi, the guy that should have had the third double portion, Elijah, Elisha, Gehazi, but he had a problem one day. Naaman the leper came and was healed and he wanted to give Elijah a bunch of gold and silver and clothes. <laughs> and the Bible said Elijah didn't take it and Naaman left, but Gehazi went after him, got the gold and the clothes, and the Bible said he hid it in a tree. Come back before the man of God. He said, where you been, Gehazi? He said, oh, I ain't been nowhere. He said, I saw you when you hid it in the tree. From now forever, the leprosy of Naaman will be on you and your sons. Now, I'm not preaching this as truth or doctrine, but there's a lot of parallels. There's some scholars that believe these four lepers were Gehazi and his sons. And on their way for the second time in their life to hide the supernatural provision of God, one of them stops and says, wait a minute. We do not well. This ain't all about us. <laughs> There's a starving city. <laughs> and I don't know if it's true or not, but in the next, the next chapter, if you keep reading your Bible, the Bible said Gehazi was sitting in the king's room and he had been talking to him on more than one occasion because the Shunammite woman came before him and, the, and Gehazi said to the king, this is the lady I was telling you about. So you put it in your bank and see what you want. I, I believe that Gehazi found a place of healing and the miraculous because he ran into a prophecy that nobody else wanted. When everybody else said it ain't going to happen, might this thing be if the Lord, but Gehazi and his three leprous boys found a miracle. They found a miracle in the making. They found a word waiting on an avenue. But nevertheless, if it was Gehazi or Uncle Joe, on their way to hide the second load, they've already spoiled two tents. They got Debbie cakes running out their ears. They stop and say, this is the day of good tidings. This ain't, this ain't about us. Let's go tell the king. And the Bible said they ran back to the city and they told the king, Woo. We went to the camp of the Syrians and there's not anybody there and they left all the food. They left a whole truck of bluebell ice cream. Come on down there. And the king, he, he can't see past his condition. He can't grasp the word of God. And he says, I know what's going on. It ain't really what God said it was. Those, those Syrians are tricking us. They're just trying to get us to come down there. They're just trying to get us to get out of the city so they can kill us. And some dummy says, hey, let's just try and see. We've only got five horses left. And they are in the same shape we are. They're consumed. Let's take five horses and go see what, what's down there. Somebody didn't have any faith because the Bible says they took two horses. Chariot horses. Now just imagine with me in your mind if the people ain't eating, the horses ain't eating. And there's some guys looking at them horses real suspicious. I believe I could skin you. These horses are as scared as everybody else. Bones sticking out. Hips showing. But there's a miracle in the atmosphere. And four leprous men lead two bony bear horses down to the gate. <laughs> And Brother Sutton, I would love to have been sitting in the gate when those four lepers come leading those barren, bony, 
miserable horses loaded down with food. And something happened when Israel saw the word of God come into pass. The Bible said they ran from the city and every man went and spoiled the tents of the Syrians and they brought it back and the king said, my God, wait a minute. And he turns to that guy that had spoken to the prophet and he says, go control it. (laughs) Yeah, right. Go stand in the gate and have charge over revival. Show us who can get blessed and who can't. Who can get the Holy Ghost and who can't. Show us who can come and who can't. Show us where to work and why. Go charge the gate. Oh, I'm about to preach. (laughs) And the dude walks down there. He's just going, I'm getting ready to quit. And he's standing, he's going to get in the gate, brother, and say, all right, all right, wait a minute. We don't want that kind of revival. And we don't want that kind of, no, 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 don't be bringing those in here. No, no, don't do that. You guys are crazy. You're uncooperative. You're a bunch of mavericks. And the Bible says that something happened on their way to buy bread, on their way with money in their hand to buy gold and buy uh, shekels worth of flour and barley. The Bible said they ran that guy over and trod him under their feet on their way to the atmosphere uh, that God had dropped out the miracle. And this is what the Bible says. This guy answered the man of God. It says it twice in two verses. When the word of God came forth, it's going to happen in your city. It's going to happen right here in Samaria. He said it's going to be two measures of barley and a measure of fine flour. And it's going to happen right here. And that guy said God would have to have windows. And God, if, if God did have windows, this thing might happen. And God said, And so it fell out unto him that he ran over him and trod him in the gate. And he died. What are you trying to preach, Brother Will? I'm telling you the words coming back. As the rain from heaven and the snow from heaven so shall my word be. It's going to fall back down. When it goes up and it comes out, it's going to fall back down. It's my God have mercy. And the only determiner in how it falls on you is your response when it comes forth. It fell on Samaria as a blessing. It fell on Samaria as flour and silver and gold and Debbie cakes and everything you can think of. But it fell on that man as judgment. How shall it fall on you? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost rising up in my spirit right now. I'm telling you that circling this city and circling this region are some prophetic words, some prophetic unctions that went forth. I'm telling you they're going to happen. I'm telling you they're coming. There's a burgeoning revival that's looking for a place to spill out. How's it going to fall on you? I don't know about you. Shut up, you Come on, church. Come on, church. There's some miracles. There's some miracles that are waiting on place. How's it going to fall on you? It's coming down as the rain from heaven and the snow from heaven. The word's coming. How shall it fall on you? The miraculous demands a response. If the Lord 
would make windows in heaven. Might this thing. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I was listening the other day to some of those old ARC takes. I'm going to tell you something. Those are the meetings that shape my existence. The first time I ever went to ARC, it took me two weeks to get over it. Just a kid. I saw something I wanted, didn't even know what it was. <laughs> but I started going over in my mind, Brother Stephen. All the times in those Friday nights when the Word of God thundered. And some of those words came to pass, and some of them haven't yet. But they're not gone. <laughs> ARC is a memory, a pleasant memory, but in the atmosphere. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, if you got the Holy Ghost, pray in the Spirit right now. I believe circling over this church and over this city and over this area and over this region. I believe there's some prophetic unctions that are still straining at the windows of heaven. I'm going to pour out a blessing. I'm going to work a work in your day that you wouldn't believe though it were told you. Ah, God have mercy I don't know about you but I'm not going to stand in the gate and try to figure it out I'm not going to stand in the gate and say it might happen I'm going to find me a skinny old horse I'm going to find me a horse that barely can handle I'm going after it my horse may be skinny he may be broken down but there's a miracle there's a healing I want you to get this and I'm quitting. The Bible is very specific. The man who said, let's take some horses down there. The Bible put it in parentheses. Read this. I'll read it for you. Parentheses. Behold. There are five horses left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of Israel that are consumed. All we got are skinny horses. And when they left Samaria, they were leading skinny horses. But the Bible says when the Syrians left the camp, they left on foot. And it says it that the Bible tells us expressly. And they rose and fled in the twilight and they left their tents and their horses and their asses and the camp as it were. <laughs> Wouldn't you have liked to have been standing on the wall? They left with skinny horses, but when they come back, <laughs> let's leave these skinny horses down here. This horse can carry a bigger burden. This They left with two skinny horses, but they came back leading all they could carry, and they were fat, and they were strong, and there was miracles on their back. 
God didn't just leave the miracle. He brought a way to bring it back. We don't even have the ability. If it fell on us right now, we wouldn't even be able to hold it. But God said, I know you can't even, you can't even carry what I'm going to give you. So I'm going to leave something down there to carry it with. There's all their horses. There's all their donkeys. Load them up and take them on. God have mercy. What a miraculous moment. I'll tell you what I'd have been doing, Brother Sutton. I, I, I feel a deep stirring in the Holy Ghost right now. I'd have found the king's horse <laughs> if I'd have been one of them lepers I'd have saddled up the king's horse wherever the biggest baddest horse was let's get that one and I'd have had as many donkeys as we could tie together loaded down can you imagine that moment when somebody with sores and wounds Half his arm missing comes riding the king's horse with a string of donkeys loaded down. That's a miracle. And it fell out on Samaria and everybody in the city except for the one that responded wrong. It fell out as miraculous supernatural provision. But it fell out on him just like he prophesied. If God made windows in heaven, it still wouldn't happen. It's going to happen. It's going to fall. But it's going to fall on you as judgment. I don't know about you. But I don't want to sit here till I die. I might run into a miracle. <laughs> Why don't we just go try something? Why you want to try something? It's safe here. Yeah, but I'm dying here. Well, you might die out there. Yeah, but I might run into a miracle. I believe God is looking for some young men and some young ladies in this church. And when I say young, I mean below 50. And I believe God's looking for some elders that'll answer right. Woo. <laughs> Don't let your circumstances dictate your response. Don't let a donkey's head and dead babies and eating doves dung dictate your response. When the word comes forth, be it unto me according to thy word. I want the miraculous. I want the supernatural. I want revival. That's never been seen in our city. I want it to fall. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to get up from the wall. I may be a leper. I may have all kind of trouble, but I'm going to find me a horse and I'm headed to Syria. I'm going to find me something. I'm going to Syria. I'm not going to sit here till I die. I'm going looking for a miracle. I'm going looking for a place that the word is going to fall out on us. So here we go. There's some miracles. There's some signs. There's some revivals that are looking for a place to fall. There's some prophecies that have lingered in the atmosphere waiting on somebody to fall on. We're going to run to this altar in the next few minutes and we're going to throw our hands and our heads in the air and we're going to say, God, fall on us. Fall on us. Hey man, I don't care how it comes. I want the word to fall on us. I'm going to respond. I'm not going to respond by my circumstances. I'm not going to respond by what's going on around me. I'm going to respond in the supernatural and God's going to pour us out of America.
Hey, come on. Come on, come on, come on. I want you to run to this altar and get your hands up and say, fall on us, God. Fall on us. We want it. We want it. We want it. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Fall on us. Fall on us. There's a word looking for a place to fall. Fall on us. Fall on us. Fall on us. Come on, miraculous. Fall on us. Let's try something. Let's try something. Heaven's looking for a miracle place. Fall on me. Fall on me in my school. Fall on me in my job. Fall on us. God's going to work for us. God's going to work for us. Fall on us, fall on us, fall on us. Come on, reach over. Reach over and get your neighbor by the hand. Heaven wants to fall on us. How's it going to fall on you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How's it going to fall on you? How's it going to fall on you? a word looking for a response. I want it to fall on us. Fall on us. Fall on us. He is able. 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 Fall on us. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, get your neighbor. I say, come on. There's a word looking for a place to fall. There's a miracle looking for a place to fall. How's it going to fall on you? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Fall on us. Fall on us. Fall on us. He is able. Hallelujah. 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 H
on you just like you respond. I'm going to respond to it. I want it to fall in favor. I want it to fall in blessing. I want it to fall in healing. Fall on it. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes. Lord, he loved me, died and he saved me. Where he carried my sins away. Rise and he testified, free me forever. Yeah. One day he's coming back, glory to God. Lord, he loved me, died and he saved me. There he carried my sins away. Yeah. Rise and he testified, free me forever. One day he's coming back, glory to God. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Send it on down. If you're looking for somebody, send it on down. It's going to fall on us in healing. It's going to fall in revival. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on. Fall on us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fall on us. We want to have a miracle. We want to have revival. We want to have an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Fall on us! Fall on us! Lord, you're about shut to go shut. Fall on us! Fall on us! Come on, prophecy! Fall on us! Fall on us! God's gonna give us revival! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Get somebody by the hand and shout a little bit. Let it fall on us. Let it fall on us. Let it fall. Hallelujah. 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 